Over the last year, uh, we've been doing some really revolutionary work, and I'm going to try and take you through this journey of open surgery to robotic surgery in the thoracic scenario. Whenever we talk of thoracic surgery, we always imagine this huge cut on the chest wall, cutting of muscles, spreading of ribs, and then going into the chest to do all the work. I trained through an era of thoracotomy and sternotomy, as most of the other cardiothoracic surgeons in this room. In England, we were fortunate enough to start a program of minimally invasive video-assisted thoracoscopic surgery with three small incisions doing most of our work. This trend followed the trend that was seen across the world by other thoracic surgeons as well. By that, we were able to perform thymectomies for myasthenia, lobectomies for lung cancer, including systematic mediastinal lymph node dissection, resection of huge mediastinal masses, esophagectomies, pneumonectomies, sleeve resections, and all various complex surgeries that were possible. So suddenly, the morbidity of thoracotomy was gone, and almost all surgery in the chest was performed by three small incisions. There was some specialized work that we could do, like brachial plexus repair, and even in pediatrics, that's made a huge difference to the recovery of the patient. But as surgeons, we are not satisfied. We always want to push the boundaries. We want to move on to the next step. And the next step, as was seen by the general surgeons, we replicated that in the chest, and we started doing almost all our surgeries by uniportal VAPs, which included a single incision of 15 millimeters with a 5 millimeter camera and a flexible endoscopy. And again, almost 80 to 90% of thoracic chest work was possible by just a single incision. So with natural progression of technology and expertise of uh, the surgeons, uh, we then moved on to do almost all of this work by local anesthesia thoracoscopy in conjunction with our pulmonology colleagues. Robotic surgery seemed like just the natural progression. It seemed like the next step up, and we took to it willingly like fish to water. Why did practice change? Practice in thoracic surgery changed purely because technology became better, and the surgical skills and experience improved with time. We had better softwares which could correctly help us identify and, Im and image the various tumors in the chest. It could give us a three-dimensional reconstruction of the various tumors. We had access to the latest equipment. In India particularly, I have found that we are not behind the Western world. In fact, nowadays, almost all the technology that's being introduced in the US or Europe is being introduced concurrently in India, or maybe a month or two later. So all the latest technologies available to us in, in India to take our practice further. Furthermore, working in the private setup, we do find that the Indian economy is booming, People have a large amount of disposable income, and with healthcare insurance coming into being, a lot more people are seeking treatment for all these complex surgeries. Experience with minimally invasive thoracic surgery helped us to push the limits of boundaries. We took on higher risk patients, and we started operating on the elderly patients. We have recently presented our data on VATS and minimally invasive thoracic surgery on the octogenarian population. And we found that they're doing really, really well. And just by taking away the morbidity of a thoracotomy, suddenly they have become operable. Whereas previously, age used to be a contraindication to complex thoracic surgery. In Indian scenario, I have found that the spectrum of lung, lung surgery includes cancer, tuberculosis, trauma, and mediastinal tumors and cysts. For me personally, the advantages of thoracic, of robotic thoracic surgery, besides the 3D visualization and the high dexterity of surgical instruments, and the seven degrees of freedom of the endorist, for me personally, what has really changed with robotic thoracic surgery is that the fulcrum of movement of the instrument has moved from the chest wall to the endo wrist. 
Remember, on the chest wall, in the intercostal space, you have the intercostal nerve. And when we do that surgery, when we are moving the instruments up and down, the fulcrum of movement is the chest wall. So you inadvertently end up damaging the intercostal nerve, and that's what leads to pain. In robotic thoracic surgery, because the movement has changed from the chest wall to the endo wrist, the damage to the intercostal nerve is less, and we are seeing less pain in these patients. Of course, with the robot, we are able to reach the distant areas within the chest. So while doing a thymectomy, you can start on one side, but you can lean the robot over onto the other side. You can open both the pleura, so you can have access to the distant area, the other, other side of the lung. You know, if you do a right-sided thymectomy, you can get over to the left side. If you do a left-sided thymectomy, you can get into the right side and thereby get a complete clearance of the tumor. Of course, the other factors are there, like preserving nerves and tumor filtering. I think the disadvantage of robotic thoracic surgery, besides the initial higher cost and increased operative time and learning curve, for me as a thoracic surgeon, is the loss of a tactile feedback. That is the biggest disadvantage that I feel robotic thoracic surgery has brought to me. But that can be overcome with experience. Robotic thoracic surgery has taken off in a big way. There's a whole range of surgeries that we are performing, robotic thymectomies, robotic lobectomies, systematic mediastinal lymph node dissection, lobectomies for aspergillomas and into TB patients, robotic resections of various adenomas, mediastinal tumors. We've also managed to do a metastatectomy for thymic cancer and for resection of mediastinal cyst. We've got a couple of very exciting cases lined up. We've got a robotic pneumonectomy. We've got robotic resection of a first rib for thoracic outlet syndrome robotic sympathectomy and also robotic esophagectomy. So essentially, every single thing that you used to do by open, you moved on to doing by VATS, and now you've moved on to doing it by the robot. These are a couple of cases of the tumors that we've taken out. Here's a tumor in the thoracic outlet. Here is a little thymoma in a patient who had myasthenia, a schwannoma in the posterior mediastinum, and that's the schwannoma coming out. And this was quite an interesting case, an aspergilloma in a patient with previous tuberculosis. Robotic lobectomy is quite challenging in terms of the positioning, in terms of getting the ports right, and also in terms of docking the robot. It's been a sharp learning curve, but we have been talking to a lot of experts in urology and things, and it has helped us to take our surgery to the next level. And this is the sort of cosmesis that you get with robotic uh, thoracic surgery. The ideal candidate for a robotic thymectomy, in my opinion, is a young patient with no previous long-term steroid therapy, with early onset of disease, and a patient who is receptor positive. We do these with the patient supine, with three small ports, exactly as we were doing it by VATS surgery. And the specimen comes out, and it's very, very important for myasthenia that you do a radical, uh, an extended radical thymectomy. We were talking with Dr. Jens Rukert yesterday, who is a world expert in robotic thymectomy, and he's been giving me some very helpful tips on how to take this surgery to the next level. The beauty of these surgeries is that the patient is admitted this morning, operated in the afternoon, the drain comes out the next morning and he's discharged the next evening. So our hospital stay is essentially two days. And the cosmetic uh, part of uh, the robotic uh, surgery is very, very acceptable to the patients. There's a lot of discussion going on about VATS versus, uh, uh, VATS versus robotic thymectomy and there is data coming out showing great benefit of robotic thymectomy. What was it like for robotics for an experienced VATS surgeon? Personally, my hand-eye coordination was not a problem. It did take time to get used to the console settings. The dissection I found was finer. The loss of tactile sensation was an issue. And also more important, when you do a robotic lobectomy, you need a very experienced thoracic surgeon at the other end. Starting a robotic thoracic program needs competence at open surgery. You've got to attend all the departmental meetings. I learned a lot from my urology colleagues, from my gynae colleagues, from my ENT colleagues. They are the ones who encouraged me to take the, uh, take the uh, program forward, and really they are the ones who, who I would give credit for the program taking off. 
Uh, you need to attend all the dry and wet labs, and there are a lot of videos available out there on the net which will help you learn these surgeries. But for me, the most important thing is to record all procedures, because once you record all procedures and you personally edit these videos, that is the time when you learn the most. It's not during the operation. It's when you're editing the videos, that's when you realize what mistakes you've made and how you can get better. There are a lot of challenges to robotic surgery in India, but we are working, and this forum particularly is helping to overcome these challenges. TB is a problem, but I think that we have proved with a little bit of literature that tuberculosis need not be a contraindication for robotic surgery. But for me, this slide is the most important. The challenges that we really face as surgeons are the mindset of the surgeons, the mindset of the pulmonologists, and the lack of education and information in the general population. What is the future progress? I think single incision robotic surgery is here to stay. That is the way we will all go. I think that's the future. And of course, we are looking at natural orifice surgery. Is it possible to do natural orifice robotic surgery, i.e. robotic endobronchial lobectomy? I think the time is right for multi-institute, multi-departmental collaborations with common research goals, for exchange of ideas and exchange of resources. When I started the robotic thoracic program, I wanted to catch just a small fish, but it's turned out to be a whopper. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. Khan, for an excellent talk. Now, I will request uh, any questions from the audience. Because of the time, we will uh, limit the questions, only two questions, uh, if anybody has any questions. Ali Khan, it was a nice presentation. I'm Dr. Rajshekar Reddy from Bangalore. I just want to know how much time you spent while docking in from the beginning until now, how you have progressed in that. I think we missed that. Uh, but I think I was very, very fortunate to have a very active urology robotic surgery program and the whole team was very experienced. When I did my first few cases, I had the urologist assisting me, scrubbed with me. Initially, the docking took about an hour. Afterwards, nowadays, we do it in 30 to 35 minutes. Dr. Ali, brilliant work. Sanjay Sharma from Mumbai. Hi, sir. Uh, I'm a thoracic, thoracic oncologist, surgical oncologist. We do a lot of work, uh, minimally invasive as well as uh, open. The problem in India, I'm sure you have realized now coming back from the West, is a lot of adhesions and tuberculosis. The fissures are really few. You think, since you have done both kind of MIS, you think robots are better in handling those fissures and all in the yeah. back knees yeah. rather than the open? The answer is very simple. Uh, last week I had uh, Dr. Devan visit me in the theater. Dr. Devan is an expert in tuberculosis. He works in the National Hospital, LRS Hospital of Tuberculosis. And I was doing a robotic lobectomy for an aspergilloma. And, you know, in his presence we did the dissection of all the adhesions on the chest wall. And he was really, really amazed by the view that you can get with the robot and you know it's the dexterity of the wrist that helps you to overcome these adhesions. In fact, it is better by robotic uh, versus VATS versus open in that order. Thank you Dr. Khan.